I'm an ordinary person living in the most extraordinary country of them all. My name is Nick Adams and this is my story. I was born in Sydney, Australia in September 1984. I'm no stranger to adversity. Most people wait a long time for a life-changing moment, but I didn't have to. At the age of 16 months, I was diagnosed with almost a death sentence, stage four neuroblastoma. My parents received the news, the worst news any parents could receive. For three years, I locked horns with the most fierce adversary imaginable. And with the power of prayer, skilled doctors, and loving parents, I overcame it all. There is a picture that I have mounted and framed. It's very special to me. It's a photo that was taken on the afternoon of my operation. And it shows me already up and about with my mother in the background looking on. I've captioned it, a celebration of life, because that's how I approach my life. From the very start, my parents made it clear to me what exactly I had beaten, the magnitude of it. And they told me to take every chance and jump at every opportunity to live the spirit of freedom. My parents sent me to one of the best schools, an all boys private school. It's there where there was lots of discipline, lots of opportunities, and where I really started to form my future. At the age of 19, I ran for local council and against all odds was elected, becoming one of the youngest ever elected councilmen. The first election I ever voted in, I voted for myself. The next year I was elected the youngest deputy mayor in Australian history, a record which I believe still stands to this day. But it's not all as rosy as it sounds. Finding success in this hyper-partisan age alienated other opportunities. Being an elected official harmed my job prospects. It meant I didn't have the same opportunities that a normal graduate would. Couldn't get internships, couldn't find work. It started to dawn on me that Australia might not be the place for me. I believe in freedom, I believe in opportunity, I believe in chasing dreams, I believe in living life to the fullest, and there's only one country where you can do that. All of my life I was drawn to and inspired by the United States of America. And it's because my personality was very American. I was bold, individualistic. I was tired of others writing the script of my life. I wanted to be the shaper of my destiny. I wanted to be in the driver's seat of my life. And that's why I came to the United States of America. It's the only country in the world where that's possible. But I had a problem. I didn't know anyone. I had no connections. So I set about trying to line up a speaking tour of the United States. My pitch was simple. I'm Nick Adams. I'm 24 years old. I love America. I've got a great life story and I'd like to be your speaker. And in a story possible only in America, and in a testament to the openness of the American society, lots of people said, yes, we'd love to have you. A few speeches became lots of speeches. And soon before I knew it, I became a, well, very long distance commuter. Pretty quickly, I ended up getting the attention of Fox News, got a book deal. But more than that, I was fighting for the values of freedom and liberty. And that's when life started to make sense. Immigrating to the United States is a very difficult thing. In fact, it's probably the most difficult thing that I've ever had to do. And my life was turned upside down in the process. But if I had my time again and I had to do it all again, I would. Because I wake up every single day and thank God that I'm here. Finally, on the 29th of July, 2016, I immigrated to the United States of America. I wanted to leave a legacy. I wanted to spearhead a movement. I wanted to blaze a trail. I wanted to do something for America. The greatest threat I found facing the United States of America was our failure to pass on what it means to be an American, to teach Americanism to our kids. I found that the conservative movement was fixated on college campuses, but I felt that the damage was done far earlier that's why I started FLAG, the Foundation for Liberty and American Greatness, an educational group focused on K-12 education. I wanted children to know that the day that they were born here or the day that they moved here permanently is the day that they won the lottery of life, that they got this incredible head start on anyone and everyone everywhere else. FLAG is as inspirational and aspirational 
as it is educational. Like many great American businesses, Flag started in a garage. Fast forward to today, and we have directly reached more than 750,000 school children in all 50 states. We're reaching over 35 million people on social media a month. We're a million dollar organization, but most importantly, we are winning back the future and transforming a generation. The American people have embraced me as though I was born here. Seven different states now have given me honorary status, the highest award possible. Some of the highlights of my time in the United States being a special guest at the State of the Union in 2019, a three-hour documentary on my life by C-SPAN, having my book occupy the entire front window of the Barnes & Noble on Fifth Avenue in Manhattan, being interviewed on television and sharing the screen with Tony Robbins, and of course, most recently, receiving a presidential appointment from the 45th President of the United States, Donald J. Trump. For the President of the United States to know who this immigrant is, is pretty special. To be called the President's favourite author, well, I don't really know what to say. It's quite surreal. I'm deeply honoured. I think we're up now to about 10 tweets about three different books over the course of three years. But I'll always remember that first tweet the most, the 3rd of March 2017, when President Trump saw me on Fox and Friends and took to Twitter to declare my book, Green Card Warrior, a must read. In all of my interactions with the President, I've found him patriotic, caring, loyal. I'm going to continue to serve America in any capacity that I can, as a presidential appointee in Washington, as the founder of FLAG, as a patriot that cares so deeply about this country. In the sweep of history, men from Payne to Schertz to Einstein, have come to America to help her in her time of need. I have always tried to follow that noble tradition.